Okay, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, I have a very humble announcement. That is after this, uh, our meeting will have one uh, for special prayer. We'll have another special prayer, especially for your upcoming graduation and also for tomorrow's program, I think on Monday, a film program. So let's remember to pray that again. I will be having a very special uh, moment after this uh, service. Uh, we'll have a dead one and also one small photo session will happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your announcement. Uh, <clears throat> next, I'll call brother for guy. All of you. Sir. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. 
I would like to sing the song that is from the songbook, song number 47. The song that there is, You Are My Only One. Amen. Amen.
and everyone who's to ever give this offering. Through this offering, if you may attend your kingdom, we submit, I submit this offering unto your hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 <coughs> I would like to call out our principal to take his time. Okay. All right, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. As we all know that this for the year 2021, today is the last day. When I say the last day, I need to say the last for the temple service. For the year 2021, second semester. And we would like to give glory to God for His blessing so that we could come together again and have this 2021, the second semester, the last chapel service together. Amen. Amen. And uh, we could come together, it's all because of His grace. Now you can see that even today there are many people lying on the roads or maybe bad accidents. Just day before yesterday, the, the team defends uh, stuff. The Wipin Rabbit, the chief of the defense of this country, made an air cross in Tamil Nadu along with his wife and another 13 officers just died. Because, you know, it's a very sad for this country, especially. And for the people in this country, we had uh, this kind of uh, a bad news. Uh, and without any reason, the people are dying. You know. Sometimes because of viruses, sometimes because of an accident, sometimes because of other different different reasons. Now what this reminds us that life is nothing. Our life is a quite uncertain, it's unpredictable life that God has given us. But for the people of God, we have something, in, I have something to tell you that your life is secure. Whether we die or we leave, we are already for the Christ. Hallelujah. Amen? And we need not be fear about dying as well. Because as we know that everybody on this earth, whether we like it or not, some day the other day, we will all die. Isn't it? Just because you are too scared and shivering does not mean that you will escape the physical death. That's coming. For every one of us. Not just for me, not just for you, but for every one of us. Therefore, we should not leave. Okay? The treasures on this earth, but rather we should start laying the treasures in heaven. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Okay. So let's set our hearts and mind to the right thing. Hallelujah. Okay. Stop delighting on the right thing because useless things, if you delight in accumulating the money and financial gain, you want to become a rich, you want to have big, bigger farm, you want to have land, blood. My friend, it's endless dreams. And even the richest person on this earth are not satisfied. The rich people are never satisfied and never, if you look at the statistic, the people who die with a heart attacks or with kind of uh, bipolar, uh, you know, uh, people who have this kind of problems are usually not from the poor community, but usually from rich community. The numbers of the suicide rates is not coming from the poor society, but from the rich community. What does it tell you? It tells you that money cannot buy happiness. Amen. Because happiness comes from God Himself. Peace and happiness come from Jesus Christ alone. Amen. Hallelujah. So stop denying yourself and living with a God. Set your affections. Amen. Hallelujah. And live a faithful life on this earth. Strive. Amen. We are human beings, we're not perfect, but still we can do, amen. As Paul said, I can do all things to Christ who strengthened me. Hallelujah. So today, uh, the, the person that we can read off is from the Matthew 22. From the Matthew 22. We'll read off from the Matthew 22 here. Standing from verse 11 to 13, because I just want to emphasize up to verse 13 and 14. And when the king came to see the guests, 
He saw there a man which had not a wedding garment. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless that said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and food and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are gone, but few are chosen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So that today in this short sermon, my topic is about a wedding garden. We all need to understand the church is not as a bride and the bridegroom is the Lord Jesus Christ. The church is always pictured as a bride. Amen. Hallelujah. I never even Apostle Paul said in chapter 5, Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. That's the maximum love. The minimum love is love your wife as you love yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. So Paul said, love your wife as love Christ loved the church. Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Amen. Hallelujah. So the church is known as the bride. And the groom is the Lord Jesus Christ. The husband is Jesus. And the wife is the church. Hallelujah. And therefore we need to have a wedding garment. Let's say for an example, you're going to have a holy matrimony, holy marriage. You're going to solemnize with one a beautiful lady. But if the bride comes in towards the altar without wearing the wedding garment, naked and Suppose if she may be beautiful, she may be the queen, or if she may have won the, the trophies and titles as a miss, she may be the miss queen, or she may have received many, many, uh, you know, awards, or she may be not in the best, uh, one of the best uh, women, or she may be known as the most beautiful girl. But if she does not have a wedding garment, if she would come to what the altar without a wearing without a wedding of garment, what would be your reaction? Will you remain standing there on the altar? Or will you run away from some, will you run away from the place and you know, jump down from one corner of the window? And I'm sure that you will not stand there because if you show that your bride is coming in and coming towards you with, without a wedding garment, that means she has some problem. That means that she's an abnormal, isn't it? She's not fit to be the bride. She's not fit to be your, your, your wife. Because she does not value the wedding garment. And she does not clothe herself in any kind of piece of cloth. And she's just coming in towards the altar. So your first reaction would be you just leave her. The reason is, no matter how much you love her, but she's not... Okay, she's not fit to be your wife because she does not value the importance of clothing and she does not value even your dignity. In some, maybe she's not obeying you because you have given her a wedding garment. So we will have to focus on the wedding garment. Now, if the church is the bride and in Christ is the husband, then we all need to have a wedding garment, and that's the reason why Jesus Christ. It reveals the importance of the wedding garment through this parable. Amen. So here the king is referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. So the king came in to see the guests. So here the, the king is a referring to Jesus Christ, who is known as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. And we all know that he's a prince of peace. And as God is the King of Kings, Hallelujah, He has all the preeminence, and He showed here a man which had not a wedding garment, Amen. So this man does not have a wedding garment, but he was in the banquet already. He already entered the banquet. He was among the guests, but this man does not have a wedding garment. What does it tell you? It tells that many people today call ourselves Christians. We all are the guests. Amen. The guests of who? Our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. But many people does not value the wedding garment. They undermine 
Okay? God's forbidden. In other words, sometimes we devalue, we do not give much value to the God's covenant. Alright, we are supposed to follow Him, but we want God to follow us. And that's wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. After God is a sovereign God, He knows the best thing for us. Amen. Hallelujah. We are supposed to follow God, but what we do is that usually many traditional Christians, what we do is that we want God to follow our tradition. Lord, we want to do this way. You just accept us. Amen. Lord, we want to do this way and just approve us. We will do our own way. Just like, I will do it my, my ways, in my terms. We don't want to follow your doctrines. We don't want to follow your commandments. We don't want to do, uh, do things on your covenant way. We simply undermine. Now, let's take an example. If Abraham would do the same thing to God, what would happen to Abraham? Would God bless Abraham? Because God said to him, I will make a covenant between you and me, but... There's a the condition, you should circumcise every male born child in your family. And including yourself, you have to do circumcision. Abraham did not respond, saying, Lord, I believe in you, I trust in you, I will not worship you, I am willing to donate whatever I have, I am willing to serve you, but I will not do this. Are very, you know, insignificant things like that, just cutting off the skins. Because it does not really make sense, isn't it? You're not even cutting your hair, but it's saying a little piece of your skin you have to, just a little piece of your skin you have to cut off. That's called a circumcision. Abraham did not undermine, he knows that it was the God's covenant, this was a sign. That God said, I'm going to give this sign between you and me. This will be the sign between me and you. Amen. So whosoever, a male born child who is not circumcised will be considered as a Gentile. But a person, a man who will undergo the circumcision will be known as holy people. Amen. Hallelujah. They will become the part of the holy nation in the Old Testament. So in the Old Testament, Every person whosoever is being circumcised is now known as people of God. Before circumcision, they are the people of this world, but after circumcision, they become the people of God. Hallelujah! Amen. So, what makes the Israelites so special is that because they are very unique, is because they have, they are circumcised people. Amen. They are God's special holy nation. So whosoever circumcised are saved, and if they're not circumcised, they remain as a Gentile. So in the same way, my friend, our father Abraham did not, you know, did not give, give any kind of disrespect. He valued Amen God's covenant. He understood that whatever that God had said to unto him, it is only for his goodness. Amen. Hallelujah. It is only for his glory. And as a result, what did he do? What did he do? Abraham obeyed God. Amen. Hallelujah. He kept God's commandment. He did not mean that, you know, he does not, you know, ignore or underestimate or undermine the commandments of God. So what did he do? He wholeheartedly kept God's commandment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So in the New Testament, you can see the baptism is the fall of circumcision. The Bible tells us that, that without the baptism in Christ Jesus, without the circumcision in Christ Jesus, that we will remain as an aliens. We will remain as an alienated people. We will remain as a strangers or the pilgrimage without the circumcision Christ, you and I cannot be part of God's holy nation. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's turn the Bible to Colossians chapter 2. Let's focus really on verse 11 and 12. So let us not undermine God's commandment. Hallelujah. I know we live here on this earth for some uh, few years. Now, even if you have the longest 
life of this earth, you will not live more than 100 years. Which means that after 100 years, whether we like it or not, we will return to the dust. Because we are made of the dust, we will return to the dust. Because that's the promise of God in Genesis 7, 3 verse 9. God said unto Abraham, as unto Adam, you are made of the dust, you shall return to the dust. Amen. So that's the universal fact. So before our before we our life comes to an end, I think we all must give importance to God's commandment. Now let's turn the Bible to Colossians 7 2. Focus on verse 11. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. So this circumcision is a very unique circumcision. This is a circumcision without hands. In putting on the body of the sins, all right, of the flesh by the circumcisions of Christ. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament circumcision, you are putting off the uh, okay the skins of the flesh. But in this circumcision, this is far superior than the first circumcision. Amen. In other words, Paul is contrasting between the old covenant and the new covenant. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is a clear contrast between the first covenant and the second covenant. And the second covenant is a far superior than the first covenant. How do we know that? You can continue reading here again. Because the first one was the putting off the body. Putting off of the body or the flesh. The skins of the flesh. But this one is a very, very, very unique. It's far superior than the first one. In whom of you are circumcised with a circumcision made with our hands? In whom? With what? In Christ Jesus. In putting out the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So in order to understand what is the circumcision of Christ, I want you to focus on verse 12 now. Amen. Everybody, please focus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's focus in verse 12 now. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse focus says, Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you have risen with him through the faith of your praise of God who had raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. So now, what is the circumcision of Christ? According to this context, the circumcision of Christ is a baptism. Hallelujah. How do we know? Look at verse 12. Amen? So you can ask questions to yourself. What is the circumcision of Christ? And the answer is the baptism. Amen? How do we know? Scripture, even read the scripture. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't have to depend on any commentaries. All I need is the Holy Bible. Amen? Because verse 11 says it's a circumcision of Christ. So the circumcision of Christ is known as the baptism. Because Paul goes on to say, you are buried with him in baptism. We're reading. All the reason with him through the oppression of the through the faith of the oppression of God who had raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. So that means through the baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus, we are unified with Christ in his death and his burial and also his resurrection. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How do we know that, my friend? We know it because that's in the Bible. Amen. This is not my ideas. This is not my doctrine. This is not my philosophy. This is what the Bible says. Hallelujah. Look at verse 12. You are buried with him in what? Baptism. Amen. Hallelujah. What baptism? The baptism in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, when Paul talks about baptism, he's not talking about John's baptism, or neither he's talking about Trinitarian baptism or Catholic's baptism. He's not talking about denomination baptism, but he was talking about one baptism, the baptism which they practiced. Amen. Hallelujah. How do we know? And let's let's try to determine what was the baptism that Apostle Paul and including the New Testament Church, the early church practice. Let's read on. Acts chapter 19. Amen. Let's be proud of the Lord. Hallelujah. I am not a proud of myself, but I'm a proud of my God and a proud of the living word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Let's turn the Bible to Acts chapter 19, verse 2 to 5. Let's read it from our sister. Amen. Read it now. Read it now. Amen. Acts chapter 19, verse 2 to 5. Acts chapter 19, verse 25. 2 to 5. 2 to 5. Mm -hmm. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Amen. Three. And he said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? And ye they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, that they shall believe on him which shall come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If we are not proud of ourselves, but we are proud of the Lord Jesus, and we are proud of the Holy Bible. Amen. Amen. So let us be the Bible-believing people, my friend. I don't want any one of my students or my friends or my brothers and sisters to be a main mate denominational preacher. I don't want you to be this holy preacher and a popular preacher, but instead I want you to be biblical, sound, apostolic, Bible preacher. Amen. I don't want popularity. Amen. What is the use of popularity, my friend? It's nothing. It will disappear like this. It's just for temporary, my friend. You don't have to strive for popularity. Amen. Someone wrote me a letter uh, and said, I know that your, your YouTube is not that popular, but I can, I can truly say it's one of the best, I think, YouTube channel that I've ever come across. Amen. Amen. And I said, you said it right. We are not popular, but we stand for the living word of God. Amen. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Because we do not strive for popularity. But we strive to interpret the scripture according to the Bible way. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I don't want my children or my brothers and sisters to become a popular preacher. But instead I want you to be Bible preacher. Amen. Amen. I want you to be the Bible way teacher and a preacher. Because that's the best thing. The only living word of God is really remain unchanging. After all, everything will work. Will vanish away. Amen. And therefore, what did Jesus say? Heaven and earth will pass away. My word shall not pass away. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's not strive for popularity, but let us strive for the living word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So, in the eyes of God, a man who received the respect and honor is a man who stands for the living word of God. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my body. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's talk about <coughs> the Apostle Paul's and the New Testament church baptism. Is that, it is obviously, it's, it's clear. It's absolutely clear. Their baptism is the baptism in Jesus' name. Because Paul has the 12 disciples of John the Baptist. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? And they said, we have not even heard there is a Holy Ghost. And Paul goes on to say, what baptism are you baptized with? They said, John's baptism. Then what? Paul said unto them, John verily baptized with baptisms of repentance, saying unto the people of Israel, that they should believe on him, who should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So when they heard this, they were baptized. In what name? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They were not baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. They were not reciting the titles. But they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the name Jesus is the name above all name. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no name that is superior and higher than the name Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And therefore I like this, some of the gospel band like Joshua Band. The Hindi gospel. Okay. Uh, band. Musical band. Joshua Band. I think they're not just singing the name of Joshua. The name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. That's true my friend. 
And if the name of Jesus is the name above all names, then do all things in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They were going to send chapter 3, verse 17 say, Whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in what? In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, my friend. Amen. It is not fear, my friend, to only pray in the name of Jesus for the divine healing, for signs and wonders. Many people love to pray in the name of Jesus. But when it comes to baptism, they will deny the baptism in Jesus' name. That's wrong, my friend. Amen. If you truly believe the name Jesus, the name of our whole name, it is the same name of God, then why don't you even use the name Jesus even when it comes to baptism? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whenever you dedicate the church to in Jesus' name, when you come to bring a degree and diploma to your student, do it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Whenever you dedicate the building, do it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. No matter what you do, in word or in deed, the Bible said, do all in the name of Jesus Christ. Because why? Because Jesus' name is a Bible name. Hallelujah. Jesus' name is the name of the Lord. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and under the earth. So that's the reason why we can see, my friend, it's through the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ that you and I are now having the circumcision in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And this circumcision is far more superior than Old Testament circumcision. Amen. Hallelujah. The people who undergo the physical circumcision in the Old Testament become not only the people of Israel are part of the Jewish community, but the people who are circumcised in Christ Jesus in the New Testament become the people of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. We become the people of the Lord Jesus Christ. We become the people of the name Jesus. Hallelujah. And Apostle Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, we become the holy nation. Amen. Hallelujah. So the people who are baptized in Jesus' name is known as the people, hallelujah, of God. And they are also known as the holy nation according to 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Now coming back to the wedding garment, say exactly what is the wedding garment? The wedding garment is the name of Jesus, it is the baptism in Jesus' name. Because it's only through the baptism in Jesus' name, you and I can clothe ourselves with that wedding garment. And this garment is unlike, amen, a physical, a literal, a holy, physical, linen and wedding garment, amen. Because all these type of wearing garments, physical garments, will disappear. It will become old, and someday that day, it will all disappear. Amen? But this wedding garment will never disappear, and it will remain forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because this wedding garment is a very unique and extraordinary wedding garment. And if you want to know what exactly this wedding garment is, I want you to turn the Bible to Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. So may we read out from Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. Here it says, Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 say, For as many of you, Amen, that means as many as of you, that means how many people, as many, that means including you and me, including anybody, who received the baptism in Jesus' name. As many of you as have been baptized into, it does not say into the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. It does not say like that. Amen. But it said, what it says here? Baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. And NIV version, the modern version said, Clothe yourself in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. The Hindi Bible says, Jesus Hallelujah. That you have fully clothed yourself with Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 
And that is what Jesus talks about a wedding garment. And in through this parable that Jesus Christ revealed it already, that in the days to come, in the world today, that many people would become the guests of the Lord, they would be a friends of God, they would call themselves Christians, but they would refuse to wear a wedding garment. They love Him, but they don't want to clothe themselves with these type of wedding garment. So this was the problem with, uh, you know, this man. So the king came and saw this man among the hosts of the people, among the guests, and he, okay, drew closer unto him and he said, friend, brother, friends, how come that you are in this banquet without a wedding garment? And the Bible said this man was spitzless. This man was spitzless. And the king ordered to his servants, his soldiers, by his hands and lack, and draw him unto the outer darkness and where there is a nasting of teeth. Amen. My friend, I don't want any one of us to be spitzless. When we we'll get into heaven, the questions will become why are you not baptizing in Jesus' name? According to my holy word of God, according to my Bible, it's clearly written that the early church, the New Testament church, practiced the baptism in Jesus' name. Then why you people rejected that baptism in Jesus' name? What would, you, what would your response? And I'm sure that many pastors would say, you know what? Uh, our uncle, our, our grandfather Abraham, uh, our grandfather Moses, respected sir, <laughs> Jesus, actually, <laughs> we know that it's in the Bible, it's in the New Testament, but the only reason why we reject is because according to our church, denominational creeds and tradition, we were not allowed to baptize or orally invoke the name Jesus when we give a baptism to the baptismal candidates. And that is the reason why, you know, Uncle Abraham, we do not practice it. And then that means that you have undermined God's word. That means you have exalted your church creeds, your church traditions, your man-made doctrine. You have exalted far superior than the living word of God. You cannot run away from that place. Amen. But as for me, my friend, as for me and my family, as those words, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. As for you and me, and to all my beloved brothers and sisters, all, all I can advise you is that stand for the name of Jesus Christ. I repeat myself, stand for the name Jesus Christ. Amen. Because Jesus does not belong to any particular community. Amen. He does not belong to any particular denomination. He belongs to you and me. He's your God. He's my God. He is our Savior and my Savior. He is our Lord and our God. Hallelujah. As Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Hallelujah. Let us stand for the name Jesus Christ and do all things in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and at the same time, let us clothe ourselves with that wedding garment. Amen. And this wedding garment is not available in Tandito. It's not available in the Monirka. This is not available in CP kind of place. You cannot find it anywhere. You can travel to London. You can go to New York. You can go to Washington, D.C. You can come back to Melbourne, Brisbane, Sydney. You can go to Hong Kong, Singapore. It's not there. Amen. It's not available here on this earth. This is not a physical wedding garment. This is the saving name of Jesus Christ. You can only receive this wedding garment only when you believe and baptize in his name. Hallelujah. Therefore, Galatians chapter 3, verse 27 says, As many of you have been baptized in Christ, lock yourself in Christ. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Let's all stand together and sing the psalm. Uh, page number 71. Pass me, Lord, O gentle Savior. Together we're going to sing this song, and I'm going to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
And right after this, I'm going to say a benediction prayer. Let us sing this song together. Pass me on, all Central Savior. Song number, Amen, 71, page number 27. Page number 27. Hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Bless us the man that delight in the word of God. And the psalmist says, Hallelujah, amen. Blessed is the people. Blessed are those. Blessed are those that are delighted in the law of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, amen. Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the God, nor standing in the ways of the sinners, nor sitting in the seed of the strong fruit, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law do he meditate day and night. God bless every one of you. Amen. Let's bow down before the Lord. Let's pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah, amen, amen. Bless every one of your children who are here, Lord. Salam, salam, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you are Lord. Ah, oh, the hallelujah of the peace on this earth. You are the holy prince of the peace. You are the king of kings and the Lord of lords. The Lord God Almighty who has made us, who has created us. Hallelujah, amen, for your divine purpose here on this earth. Father, we pray with all our hearts and minds that, Lord, you would continue to use this Adventist ministry, that you would continue to use this, your family members, hallelujah, your children who are here in this place. So, Lord, hallelujah, amen. We could serve you, Lord, and we could, Lord, do something, hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, amen, about your kingdom. Help us, Lord, so that, Lord, your kingdom can be all and Lord. That people will come to the knowledge and saving of the Lord Jesus Christ. So that more and more people will see the light and the truth. Hallelujah, that you, Lord, are the King of kings and Lord of Lord. Hallelujah, be magnified in our life, Lord. Continue to be glorified in our life. Use us, Lord, and bless every one of us. And bless this our country, India. And use, Lord, our leaders, hallelujah. So, Lord, they can lead us in the right direction. At the same time, Father, we pray, hallelujah, amen, for the upcoming, all the programs that we have. So we can see, hallelujah, amen, the glory of the name Jesus Christ. So that more and more people will trust in you. Hallelujah, amen. Use us, Lord, and extend your kingdom. So the Lord, hallelujah, amen, more and more people will come to knowledge of saving. Hallelujah, knowledge of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the glory for your presence in our midst and for continuing to bless us, Lord. We pray, Lord, you continue to bless every one of us. Hallelujah, lead and guide us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Continue to pour out your blessing upon our lives. We want to see you be glorified, Lord. Continue to be glorified and it's in every one of our lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. amen. Okay, guys, God bless you. Thank you so much.